Hello everybody, Dark Skeleton here, and in this video I wanted to talk about how I hit Legend this month playing an aggro Demon Hunter deck. As you can see here, I had a 78% win rate getting into Legend, and it is an incredibly cheap deck to play. So let's go ahead, get back into Hearthstone. So here you can see that I hit Legend a few days ago. I think I placed like 8800 or something. Not sure how that ranking works. Maybe if you hit Legend more times you get a higher ranking when you enter. But in any case, let's take a look at the deck. So if we go to Aggro Demon Hunter here, and I'll copy paste the deck list into the YouTube description, of course. So you can see it's basically got a bunch of one drops. This is actually based on kind of more of a standard Aggro Demon Hunter list that's been going around on Hearthstone Replay, hsreplay.net. But I modified it for a few cards because I thought that cards like Skull of Gul'dan were actually just too slow and didn't make a lot of sense. Like if you play Skull of Gul'dan on turn 6, you draw 3 cards and they have reduced mana costs. So if you play that with Altruis, or whatever his name is, this guy, then uh, yeah sure you can do a few damage on the following turn. But the thing is you don't really want to spend 6 mana doing nothing for a turn. But I think you really don't want to spend 6 mana drawing cards on your turn 6. You kind of want to be very very close to finishing off the game. And a lot of the cards in the deck are one cost, so I thought it would be better to cut that. So the main cards that are actually different in this deck are, first off, Illidori Fellblade. So this is a 4 mana, 5, 3, Rush, Outcast, gain immune this turn. So with a low mana cost deck, getting Outcast is actually very easy. So this is kind of like a 4 mana, 5, 3, kill a guy. 5 damage is going to pretty much get through most of the taunts, especially cards like Teacher's Pet, which is very popular in Druid decks at the moment. Has 5 health, has a 5 mana min. So I think that's actually pretty good. Uh, this new card, Vile Fiend Trainer, new common, is actually insane. 4 mana, 5, 4, Outcast, Summon 2, 1, 1, Demons. Uh, that's just a lot of stats. Once again, because you're a low mana cost deck, you're going to get that consistently, as long as it's on the left side or the right side of your hand. Lots of stats, really good. And because a lot of these cards in the deck actually make a lot of small minions, I thought it would be a good idea to put in Wrath Scale Naga, which actually was able to get me my victory on the final match going into Legend. And yeah, of course, other games too. But uh, as a 3 mana 3-1, three, where after a friendly minion dies, deal 3 damage to a random enemy. I know uh, most people don't think this card is very good, but I actually think it is quite insane, especially if you have a bunch of minions on the board. Which this deck naturally does, even the base version of this deck does. Because you just throw out a bunch of one cost minions. Cards like Umberwing, Sadir Overseer, yeah, you're going to get a full board sooner or later. And rather than running into a possible AoE, I think it's much better to cash in those minions and get some extra damage. And so Vethsko and I get pretty good. And then, in addition to that, I throw in Command the Illidari. So 5 mana, summon 6 one, one Illidari with Rush. Uh, pretty comparable to that Hunter card, 1 mana more and you get 7 one ones. Difference is, Demon Hunter doesn't have the quest, but I think even without having that Hunter quest where you summon 20 minions, and then you get Savage Roars of Hero Power, it's actually pretty solid. Uh, the combo here, Rathscale Naga, Command the Illidari, more often than not, you're not really going to be able to get that off. But if you did, it would be absolutely insane. Like, six guys that die, and then you get 18 random damage split across your opponent's board and face. Yeah, pretty good. Um, so let's just talk about the other cards. Battle Fiend, uh, one mana, one two. After your hero attacks, gain plus one attack. It's okay. I don't think it's actually that insane anymore ever since it got nerfed from two attack, two health, to one attack. Uh, yeah, you'll be able to attack pretty easily with Twin, stri uh, twin Slice, Umberwing, and just your hero power, which you'll weave in naturally. So it, it's decent enough to put in the deck. Beaming Sidekick is really good. Um, getting key minions up to a health total where your opponent has to respond to it. Uh, oftentimes it can bait things like Zephyrus if you're going up against a Singleton deck. So if you play Battle Fiend and then you buff it up with a Beaming Sidekick and you're getting attack with it, uh, by using your hero power, it becomes a really big threat. Turn 2, turn 3, your opponent's going to be like, oh my god, I have to get rid of that. So, really great one drop. Uh, Blazing Battlemaster, uh, 1 mana 2-2. Two, two. Naturally goes in a lot of aggro decks, it's just really solid. Uh, Crimson Sigil Runner. So this was one of the cards I slotted in as well. It's 1 mana 1-1 one, one outcast draw card, which, you know, I, I don't think it goes in every deck since it got nerfed from 2 attack to one attack but 
because you're playing kind of a board flooding deck with cards like Demon Companion, which has the mini Leoc, which can buff up your minions, giving them extra attack, and because I threw in Wrath Scale Naga, I think that Crimson Sigil Runner is actually pretty good. So it's like a uh, novice engineer, but for one mana. Of course, you have to be playing a deck which supports it being an outcast, but very consistently you'll be able to get that draw card. So one mana, one one draw card is pretty good. Demon Hunter, or sorry, Demon Companion is a really great spell. So it either summons a 2-1 Huffer, charges the face for two damage. It summons a 1-2 Liak, gives your other minions plus one attack. Often that's the one you want to get lucky on. Or it summons a one mana 2-2 two, two taunt, which is also pretty good. Uh, I wouldn't underestimate taunts. If you throw a taunt in the way of your opponent's attacks, then you can keep key minions alive for... Well, I mean, we'll get to those later. So Guardian uh, Og Merchant is a really great one drop. So you deal one damage to a minion and you give it Divine, divine Shield. The standard card you throw that on is Bone Chewer Brawler. So Churn 2 or Churn 1 with Coin, you put out Bone Chewer Brawler. On Churn 2, you turn it into a 4-2 Divine Shield. You get either a trade into a minion or you hit the opponent's face. Um, I'd say a lot of times you just go face because this is an aggro deck. But uh, a 4-2 with Divine Shield is a pain to deal with on Churn 1, 2, or 3. So good combo there. But there's an extra benefit. The Illidari Fellblade, it has immune on the turn you play it. So if you have 5 mana or uh, 4 mana plus a coin, you can not only kill a minion with immune, but then you can also give it divine shield without making it take damage, which means it would be immune to execute effects. Not super relevant, but it gets to keep that one extra health. So in that sense, it becomes like a one mana, two one, give a minion divine shield, which is even better. So yeah, I, usually, I throw it on Illidari Fellblade all the time. Um, so let's see, Umberwing. Uh, I mean, it's a decent card, it just... Gives you extra attacks that you can use with Battle Fiend, and you don't have to pay extra mana for. So if you play this on turn 2, it's an obvious follow-up. Gets you extra 1-1s. Um, just a solid card over round, all around. And then Voracious Reader. So I didn't keep Skull of Gold on, but I did keep Voracious Reader. And this is a important card to keep alive. So those taunts I was mentioning, basically Bone Chewer Brawler. And if you get lucky with the Demon Companion... Helps to keep Voracious Reader alive. At the end of your turn, draw until you have three cards. So, it's not like this deck revolves around getting card draw, but if you do happen to go low on cards and you have Voracious Reader in hand, it's going to be really good. It's a low mana curve deck, so this just fits in naturally. I don't think you're trying to keep a full hand all the time. You're trying to finish your opponent off before you actually run out of cards. So, that's why I don't rely on Skull of Gold and It's just you go all in. Even if your opponent might have a brawl or something, you just keep flooding the board, trying to overwhelm your opponent. And if you happen to draw Voracious Reader, yeah, that's good. Get some card draw with it. It's a good card. Uh, Sadier Overseer. 3 mana, 4, 2. After your hero attacks, summon a 2, 2 Sadier. So, good with Umberwing. What I would probably do if I had Sadier Overseer in hand is play Umberwing on 2 and then not attack until turn 3. So that you don't have to spend mana to gain those extra attacks. Uh, oftentimes, I would just hold on to the Umber Wing attack. It's the only weapon in the deck until you basically have floating mana to hero power with, and then it makes sense to just use that um, mana to actually attack. Or if you have a card like Sadir Overseer or uh, Battle Fiend on the board where you get a benefit from attacking. Otherwise, I would just kind of let it sit there and hold on to it. Yep, okay. So that actually basically covers the deck. So I haven't done the exact mana cost for the deck yet, but Wrathscale Naga is the only epic in the deck, and it's actually free. So, let's see, Illidari Fellblade. And then a lot of these other cards are also going to be free Demon Hunter cards, and most of the rest of them are just common. So, Beaming Sidekick, common, 40 dust. 40 dust. Uh, I think Crimson Sigil Runner, you had to get in a pack, so that's 40 dust. Demon Companion, 100 dust, you know, so on and so forth. This deck might actually be under a thousand dust, honestly, since a lot of the cards are just the the ones you get for Demon Hunter for free. So yeah, it's really good. You can see I was able to get a 78% win rate. Your mileage will probably vary. Okay, so a few tips for the deck. First off, it's an aggro deck, so pretty much you're going all in most of the time. If you want to overrun your opponent, you can't hold back anything. You have to force them to respond to you. 
So don't really think too much about trading unless it's a really, really, really good trade. Just figure out how you can put on as much pressure as possible and be very aggressive with the deck. Secondly, keep in mind the positioning of your taunts, especially if you're going up against druids who are going to summon Lake Thresher um, and give it rush, sometimes with a 1-1 one, one broom uh, minion, and then sometimes with a 7-mana druid spell that summons two beasts and gives them rush. Uh, Lake Thresher will destroy you if you let it cleave your really important minion like a voracious reader or a satyr overseer so keep those on the edges do try to get the trick in where you can give a free divine shield with the og merchant to Fellblade. i've seen that being pretty good but obviously if you can get the hand where you have bone chewer brawler and guardian og merchant really good combo there uh, as far as one drops i would usually keep most of them in the hand Twin Slice, I don't think I would. You want to get a minion out on turn one if you can. So Beaming Sidekick is really good if you have another minion to throw it onto. So if you had Coin, I might keep Bone Chewer Brawler followed up by a Beaming Sidekick. But you wouldn't keep Beaming Sidekick if it's the only one cost in your hand. Also, keep in mind that if you have an over... Uh, sorry, if you have a Outcast minion on your opening draw and it's on the left side, then you can guarantee that you're going to get the Outcast effect for it. So if you draw... Crimson Sigil Runner before your mulligan on your left side. It becomes a little bit better as a keep. Otherwise, I would probably toss it to just draw a better card at the start of the game. Um, this is better when you draw it or if it's on the left side than it is really in your opening hand. Uh, it's more like extra fuel and getting through your deck to more important cards. So the outcast thing also applies to cards like Vile Fiend Trainer. So sometimes I would actually keep Vile Fiend Trainer as the leftmost card before a mulligan if you have another one drop in hand because if you can play this on turn four or turn three with the coin, it is super powerful. Illidori Foulblade, a little less so. I don't know how often I would keep that in my opening hand, but Vile Fiend Trainer on the left is pretty good. So if you're going to play Wrathscale Naga, don't be too greedy with it. If you have a few minions on the board to trade in, oftentimes that is going to be worth it if you can get 3 damage once or twice randomly. Uh, that is really solid. Uh, you can obviously get a lot of value with Command the Illidari, but rather than waiting for turn 8, which is probably the end of the game anyway, or even before that, you could try playing Command the Illidari, and then don't sacrifice all of your tokens, but follow it up with Wrathscale Naga on the next turn if they happen to survive or don't get AoE'd. That is often a better play than trying to combine the two at once. So Wrathscale Naga is actually stronger when you have a board of random minions than it is trying to really play it from the hand, from my personal experience. At least in this aggro deck list. If you were playing something else, maybe that would be different, but... Oftentimes you just don't have the time or mana to combo, so just go ham. If you can get value out of it, that's going to be good. Uh, often in the current meta, a 1 health minion is just as good as a 2 health minion. So if you think of it like an SI7 agent, it's decent even if you only get 1 or 2 procs off of it. So that's pretty much going to be it for this video on hitting legend with aggro demon hunter. Uh, my first time hitting Legend, I don't know if I'm going to actually do the grind and do it again. I just kind of wanted to do it once to prove to myself that I could. So, that's going to be it for this video. I've been Dark Skeleton. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.